people, you know, guys, we've been uh, asked to do fried stuff for a while. Here's a problem. Uh, Miss Fancy Pants behind the camera does not like her house smelling like fried food. And here in Baldwin, Fancy Town, the exhaust fans really don't exhaust. <laughs> they just suck that greasy air up, catch the grease and as much as they can, in the house. spit that air right back out in the house. Hey, guys. Uh, so, uh, hey, welcome to the show. This is Primetime Kitchens, How Tuesday. I think it's episode 40. No, I think, ooh, we may be in the 50s. I think, no, really? I think so. Anyway, somewhere in that area, mid 40s, something like that. Uh, we do have tons of content. You'll see it on my apron here. It's ptkradio.com. We're brilliant because we put this right below the table <laughs> area because we're super bad at life. But anyway, I'm Jim. That's Tori. Hey, guys. And uh, thanks for uh, checking the show out. We really do appreciate it. Um, as we do the show, please like and share. Um, that's how we get the video out to everybody as we kind of move forward. Uh, that's how we get more people on Drink, Eat, Repeat. That's, that's how right. we get more people on Primetime Kitchen. Absolutely. And like Tori said, Drink, Eat, Repeat is our new subgroup of Primetime Kitchen's uh, Facebook page, get in there. There are tons of people interacting. And you know what the cool thing is, is it doesn't have to be anything fancy. We have a couple professional chefs that are part of the group. Actually, a number of them. Brian Thoman, uh, Jesse Loris is also a professional chef. These guys Bruno are part of the group. Fonseca. Bruno Fonseca watches the uh, show as well. So thanks, Bruno, who cooks our Hunger Street tacos, I think. Uh, it's the best taco in the city. If not, it's damn sure top one. <laughs> um, pretty good. You get that bone marrow, I think it's sopa. God dang, it's a game changer, guys. Yeah, you Real. scrape the bone marrow oh. out of it. Oh. Super unique food from a really, really talented guy. Actually, the whole crew over there is talented. Um, they want a, a smoke and pyro entrance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not, they do? Not you coming out of the bathroom. Like, I just <laughs> Well, you, that's your fault. I had nothing to do with it. I could have done, I could have come out of that, like, ah, oh, dressing room. Shirt, tore it off. Except like, there was a toilet in the background. There was a toilet in the back of <laughs> fresh pee in my head. I did wash my hands. I did not beforehand. Um, so tonight we're going to make chicken fried steak. We've actually been asked to make this quite a bit. We have. And, and I'm going to make my... I think as, Marissa. Marissa asked this time. Okay. I'm going to make as close to I can as my grandmother's okra. My grandmother had a very special way to make okra. I think it's not that big of a secret, but just kind of the way she did it. The ratios of cornmeal to flour, uh, salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder in there. Nothing really that challenging. It's just how you cook it, you know, with the vessel you're cooking. A lot of people try to deep fry it. It's really not the way it works. They love your halo. <laughs> oh, is it coming up the mirror and making me look like I have a halo? No, it's the shape of like... My head. Thanks, man. <laughs> As always, Tori here, making me feel great about myself. Yeah, smoke, pyro, and white snake. That's what they want uh, for your entrance. Actually, that is my comedy album. Smoke, pyro... White Snake. By the way, I think that Slide in an album is like one of the best rock albums. It doesn't get the credit it's due, but it's a really good album. Holds up with all the albums released within two years of that record. Check it out. Mark, I would put the uh, description of what I'm cooking in the thing, but uh, Facebook's algorithm, if I put any type of description in it, there's like nobody joins. I'm but, telling you straight up, we're so pissed off with all these people who have to deliver this product. We know we are reaching a lot more people than they're showing us, which sucks because when we first started the product, we were having like 20,000, 30,000 yeah, views, and now we have like six. So we're actually working right now on getting our own uh, kind of server. Stream. In other words, you'll log into ptkradio.com to see this show. We'll be streaming it live here on our own channel. That's really what we're striving toward. It's a lot more complicated than I thought. I was like, yeah, just set it up. Let's do it. Uh, it doesn't work like that. No. Old Dum Dum Jim thinks it's so easy. But uh, we're also going to make some mashed potatoes tonight because that's what you have to have with chicken fried steak. We've made them before. We'll make them again for you guys. And of course, fresh fried okra. If you don't mind, like I said, if you're just joining us, like and share the video throughout the cooking thing. And uh, we'll get you going on some southern fried goodness right now. Okay. All right, a couple things. When it comes to quality uh, products, I pretty much cook with Dixie Lily cornmeal. Always have. This is what my grandmother used uh, our entire lives. And we use Pillsbury. I think this is Pillsbury. No. No, gold metal. I'm sorry. Gold metal flour. Uh, we got our protein from Publix tonight. It's just your basic cube steak. And by the way, guys, you buy it already done like that. And if they don't have it, they will make it for you every single time. They'll just go get the round. I think it's round. They'll go get the round. They'll cube it up for you real quick. They'll run it through the machine. Is that what and, we uh, did? No, no, that's what they did. Oh. But what I'm saying is they will. So a couple things we got to get going first. What are you drinking first? I'm of all? drinking Swamp Ape, and let me tell you, it's kicking my ass already. Oh wow! Because it's, like, it's like it's ten percent. Thanks for sharing, Kathy. You guys aren't really into it if you don't share it. Yeah, so we don't we don't like you as much if you don't share. Um, now we do have an event coming up in October. Uh, it's going to be called our picnic. 
If you join Drink, Eat, Repeat, you'll see all about it. We're going to Jetty Park. We're going to roast a pig. Uh, Wasi's Meats is donating it, and hopefully we can get the guys from, um, uh, from Bimbo Bakeries on to do some bread products for us, and then we want you guys to bring sides. This is just like a get-together. Hey, where'd you get the beer real fast? Real fast? Uh, I got that at Publix. They sell it at Publix, believe it or not. Okay. Uh, that's a Florida beer, Florida Beer Company. Uh, it's pretty legendary in the world of like you know strong double IPAs. That's a double IPA. It's you know it's ten percent alcohol, so it's for real. So, what part of the 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 cow is cube steak? I think it's a it's a I think it's a round steak, and then they basically because round steak doesn't really cook that well as a piece of steak without being tenderized. So that's what I think it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> they said you're using the peeler the wrong way. Uh, I'm not. But that's okay. <laughs> Um, you guys can continue to tell me how to do my thing. I mean, uh, that's okay. So basically, we're going to cut these potatoes into a normal dice. I like to make them about inch cubes. You know, super simple. Because we're just going to... Hey, Jennifer. Oh, by the way. Hey, Tracy. Thank you so much, Shun, this knife. And by the way, to show you and prove to you, we endorse pro quality products here on How Tuesday. Um, uh, I think it was Best Reviews just did a review of the five best kitchen knives and two of them are in my block. And I used to have a global, I don't know where the hell that thing is, but this is their new Kai Pro Series from Shun. Affordable, durable, and it turned out to be uh, the number one knife they, they recommended is Shun knives. So uh, these are, it's great steel, it stays super sharp, uh, and I think you'll like them. And by the way, the people are really nice people. Uh, we actually like them just as people. Uh, now, Marissa cooked her cube steak in the crock pot and she said it was really good. Well, I mean, I've never heard of that. Now you can do that, but it's, I, I can't imagine she got it crispy. No, no. Well, be, no. then why cook it? <laughs> I mean, I want to, the whole idea of cooking cube steak to me, now this is just my thing, I'm not making fun of you, but my thing is you want cube steak to be crispy, so. Travis wants to know when the Friday show is gonna be full time. Well. The Friday show is definitely going to be full-time uh, by January. And just stay tuned. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows in this crazy world? All right, so we if you'll notice, we did not start the water boiling. Okay. Bart said he's in Palatka uh, watching us cook white trash food. Well, that's cool. Well, I'm white trash, so. Full circle. That's right. <laughs> Living in trailer my entire life. Uh, Blake, um, where can we find your blog? Like, I'm sorry, I, it got cut off. And also, the pots and pans and stuff, we have a hodgepodge of pots and pans. We are actually looking for a pots and pan sponsor, as a matter of fact, but um, we have like a lodge, a uh, cast iron skillet, we have emeralds, we have um You said ceramic. it right, it's a hodgepodge. It is, I, it is. I mean, the frying pan I have, I got from Publix for like $19. So, <laughs> you know, and again, one of the misconceptions I think that most people get with I you know I, talk, I tell you I saw a really good post on Facebook this week and there's a guy or on a drink you repeat a guy cooking burgers on a little $19 Walmart grill and he said you know I don't need this I don't need that I can make this taste great and I said to him hey man it's a fire you know it goes back it's a fire yeah you can have a big green egg you can have a gas grill you're right it's an open fire it's all about preference you do not have to spend all that money to get good flavor I just know for a fact that when you buy an egg it takes that part of the equation out because <laughs> you have the best equipment now um, Laura bought her boyfriend I, I, it was either boyfriend or husband a mandolin and he's already cut his finger Oh, and they, there's a couple of people who want to know where they can get these aprons. Ah, so if you go to PTK right now, nope. oh, sorry, sorry, if you go to our Facebook page that you're on right now, you can see it right there. Just message Tori, right? Just email Tori, or you can email primetimekitchen at gmail.com. Tell her what you want, and Tori will make it custom. We have a bunch of different kind of styles. This is kind of blingy. We have paisley patterns, all kinds of stuff. Also, I think the new ones are going to have the new logo. Are we doing the new logo? Oh, yeah, the new um, yeah, I can actually show up one of those right now. And while you're doing that, boop, I'll start this and then you guys can see my <laughs> pantry. Here's the new logo. You can do them in different like designs and stuff like that. That's the new logo. Yeah, you have a bunch of different colors and stuff like that. So we're gonna just go ahead and cut this Oprah up real quick. I'm only, I'm only doing one pack because Tori's not eating tonight. Uh, because I told her she couldn't. <laughs> That's um, not going to go well. get a cast iron skillet at uh, Old Time Pottery. Old, old, old Time Pottery. You can get them at Wassie's Meats if you're over in Melbourne. They have all the lodge stuff at Wassie's, which we, we love because, of course, they help us bring this show to you. So, okra, what I do is I cut the butt off, and then I cut these pieces about like that. All right? Now, a lot of people cut them a little bit bigger. You can cut them a little bit bigger. All right? So, that's like 
uh, three quarters of an yeah, inch? Yeah, half an inch. Really, it's about a half an inch. Okay. Now, the one thing I did forget today, and I'll show you a cool little trick. I forgot to buy buttermilk. Now, what we do with this, my grandmother used to do this, she would soak her okra in buttermilk for 10 minutes or so until it's about ready, getting ready to uh, flour, and I'll show you that mix here in a second. So, I forgot buttermilk. Now, oh, thanks, Mark. I have, I have some half and half here, which is half cream, half, uh, half uh, milk, okay? Whole milk. And here's how you make buttermilk. Each lemon that you, you buy is about two tablespoons of juice. So for every cup or so of, maybe not even that much, for every cup and a half or two cups of milk, you want to put about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Come here and watch for it. Check it out real quick. Yeah, Jennifer, they do have it at Cracker Barrel because I ate at Cracker watch. Barrel several times. This milk is going to start to curdle. It's going to get thick. You, as soon as it hit, hit that uh, acid, it's going to thicken right up. So that is actually going to turn into makeshift buttermilk. Now, of course, it's not buttermilk buttermilk, uh, but it will do in a pinch. And if you don't want to buy it, it's hard to find like a pint of buttermilk. You have to buy like a quart or a half, you know. Um, Mike said that you can use apple cider vinegar too. If you, you can. Any lemon. You can. You can use white vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Any acid like that is going to is going to get it going. And uh, Guys, if you could do us a favor and like and share, that would be super We appreciate awesome. it. Like and share as you watch the video. And again, just coming right down this okra. And okra is a great vegetable, man. I mean, of course, it's also a great thickener. Uh, the Cajuns have used it for years to thicken up their gumbos and all their great stews. And you can do the same thing. Actually, a little bit of okra in your stew will provide a little thickness. If you don't like that texture, though, that may have been a little bit difficult to get beyond. Ask your question again. Um, I, I didn't see it. If we press our own something. I, we're not doing any garlic or anything tonight, so I don't know. Um, if you buy an old cast iron from garage sales. Uh, yes. Jimmy's actually gotten so many. I mean, like our uh, food board, our food processor. Yeah, our I food said board processor. Yeah. Our food processor. Oh, welcome, welcome to the eighties. Welcome to nineteen eighties. Great to see you. <laughs> come back. Uh, we got our food processor. I got a two hundred and twenty-five dollar food processor at a garage sale for thirty dollars, and I'm telling you guys, it was virtually brand new. And if you do not have a food processor in your kitchen, I would strongly suggest that you do what, Tori? Um, get a food processor into your, your kitchen. kitchen. Yes, because from a garage sale. Yeah, it is magical. And you can go to estate sales and find them all day long. You just want to make sure you get a good quality brand. Justin wants to know when, uh, where you got your shoe knife. LJ, you missed what we're cooking. We are cooking country fried steak, some mashed potatoes, and some fried okra. Yeah, we're doing a big old southern uh, Paula Dean thing tonight. Um, we got our shoe knife at Wassie's. Uh, Wassies carries all the shoe knives. This is a, we got this actually from the shoon rep. Um, this but we met Kai. him through Wassies, yeah. K-A-I? Yeah, K-A-I. Their new Kai Pro Series. This is a Kai Pro Series knife. And it is Shizarp. Where does Jimmy think that you can get the bre best breast? God, I'm mining. My tongue's not working tonight. Or maybe it is. <laughs> best crawfish in Orlando. Oh, my God. Um, I got to tell you something crazy. I'm not a giant crawfish fan. Does it Tibby's have uh, it? Tibby's has it for sure. We actually, on Prime Tip Kitchen, the radio show, which I should promote more <laughs> through the show, uh, which you can hear every Friday night at 8 o'clock on Real Radio 104.1, and you can hear it every Sunday morning, which is when most people watch it or listen to the show. We are having, uh, we have a Cajun place coming in. I think this week. Okay. So if you want to learn about another Cajun place and about the idea of Cajun food altogether, you know which you know what really is unfortunate about that food, Creole food, it's really Creole food, is it gets the moniker of being spicy. And can I tell you, it's it's really not. Um, it's what you think is spicy, but for the most part, it's just a bunch of flavor. Well, they it don't gives cook... John gas. Huh? Crawfish. What? He said crawfish gives him gas. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> There's no question I needed to know that. You're welcome. Uh, Lafayette's? Julia That's it. Said, Lafayette's coming in tomorrow. Hey, Nikki. Nikki said this is perfect Idaho food. You what? What? Nikki said this is perfect Idaho food. Oh, this is Idaho food for sure. So this is buttermilk. We have our um, our okra soaking in this buttermilk. So let's go ahead and get, we have our potatoes, go, our potatoes going. Now, why I started these in cold water instead of hot water. So here's what you don't want to do with potatoes when you're making mashed potatoes. This is a big mistake. First things first, you got to choose the right potato. Just get russets. You're fine. All right, perfect start, perfect first everything. First. Okay, first things first, you're the realist. <clears throat> you're right. 
put it in cold water, bring the water up. Here's why. If you put potatoes in boiling water like that, it's gonna cook the outside of the potato to mush before it cooks the inside of the potato. And here's what happens when you do that. When you try to make your mashed potatoes, the potato is holding so much water, it's actually turning into like a, a, a mush, like a diaper. You know, it has that, that weird, oh, kind of mushy. That weird, yeah. You don't want that. That's just gonna make your potatoes really watery. They're not gonna have any body to them and they're just not gonna taste right. So what we wanna do is make sure that we put the potatoes in cold water and then bring the water up to temperature because all the potatoes will cook at the same time. And by the time the water starts boiling, you'll only have to boil the potatoes for about five minutes and that's it and they'll be done. And we're only doing enough for like one serving tonight just to kind of give you the idea of how much. We put butter and cream, salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder and that's all we do. Okay. It's just the, the ratio. So let's get going here. Let's make our ratio. Ratio. Nope. You ratio. You said ratio. Good choice. So, how long do you keep the okra in the butter milk? About 10 minutes. I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna just leave it in there until we, until we get going, you know. So we're gonna make an egg wash real quick. All right. We're gonna make it with a little milk. Hey Mike, how's your how's your wife doing? His wife, the uh, young lady that's in the wheelchair that they came out. Oh with. yeah, yeah, she they're awesome people. Her hip was bothering her. She just had her surgery. Oh awesome! Well, I, I hope she's were, okay. I saw they were at Shans. Yeah, they're real good people, man. We love love them. Love good. Love seeing them. Consistency is key with the potatoes. Yes, absolutely. Who said that? LJ. Yep. Absolutely cons uh, perfect, and you're right, it is. And I love the fact that you guys know what you're doing and you still tune in because really this show is for people who are kind of learning how. We find that a lot of our listeners and viewers are like guys a little bit younger than me, like 35 to 44 years old, mm -hmm. who honestly just want to learn how to cook for their family, which I totally appreciate. Really, yeah. part of my drive was doing that very thing. They're calling you out for not using whole milk in your wash. Okay, if you'll notice, I just added some half and half to that. So in other words, I'm saying you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you only have two percent milk and um... you're not gonna, it's not gonna bother you. Really, okay. whole milk is gonna make it better. It's gonna make that a little crispier. But we're gonna double dip this anyhow, okay? Because we're double dipping kind of fools. All right. So with our with our steak, our chicken fried steak, we're gonna make this flour. And that bag has a bust in it, so it's good. and garlic powder. A little bit. How? That's probably that's probably about a teaspoon per cup of um, per cup of flour. Okay. Oh, they said a little younger than you is like sixty. Yeah. Low hanging fruit, you guys. You got to do better than that. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get a lot of black pepper in here. Mm -hmm. Beef loves black pepper. I mean, loves it. So we want to get a lot of good fresh ground black pepper. How many of those guys out there use a pepper mill? As opposed to shaking pepper out of a out of a shake. I don't know, but Mark is doing your pork chops. Oh, awesome! Um, and then somebody else said that they did your tri tip, and it was oh for the World Cup. He made him. He made the tri tip. Oh, right on for the, World the roast tri tip. How good yes. was that? Did he, he make the cheese bomb. sauce? Oh my he god! Said they were bomb. I gotta make that. I can make that cheese sauce and literally put it on anything. Yeah. All right, so we have our flour mix. Flour, garlic powder, and a lot of black pepper. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more black pepper in here, okay? I'm counting it tonight, Eric. You know it, buddy. What's he counting? I ain't telling you. How many times I've scratched my nose? It's between Eric and I. How many drug references I make during my cooking show? Oh, you're so cool. Cool. I know you're gonna that say makes that. you so cool. Cool. I know you're going to say that again. <laughs> so predictable. Um, All right, so. I just had chicken fried steak at Cheddar's the other day. Cheddar's is good. You it's, know what? Cheddar's is pretty good. It's scratch. It's a scratch kitchen. Yeah. It ain't that bad. They use pink Himalayan salt, too. You know what? You know what? There's a trend that I don't care for in the food thing around uh, Orlando. Let me let me say this. I, I recommended Marlowe's to somebody the other day. And... and they actually came at me. They were like, Marlo, that's a chain. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, it is a chain. Uh, just like Christner, or excuse me, Ruth Chris is a chain, and Fleming's is a chain, and Houston's or Hillstone uh, partly was a chain at one point. So what I'm saying is this. Just because it's a chain doesn't mean you can't get good food. Marlo's has great customer service. The people who run that chain, and it is a boutique chain, really do give a damn about your experience. I promise. I know all of them. I've known them for years. We helped them open up and be very successful here in Central Florida. Well, and we had a PTK Live sure. there, and it was one of our biggest. Well, not to mention, how about this? They've opened their doors to us two occasions. We've done two PTK Lives at two different events. And this is not a pitch. They don't pay me a nickel, okay? Not for this, that's for sure. But 
I don't mind recommending a chain if the chain does a good job and they care about the customer. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't have to re recommend local food all the time. Dan Paul said uh, Marlowe's is like the best chain. Marlowe's is a very good chain, Dan. I agree with that 100%. Now. They said you need some WD-40 on that pepper grinder. All right. I disagree. Um, yeah, he said he did make the cheese sauce for the tri-tip. Yeah, that's... Get really good aged white cheddar and good quality horseradish, man. On the Wasi's egg that you uh, bought. Oh, yeah. On the egg you bought. Right. Got to have it. By the way, if you haven't been over to Wasi's yet in Melbourne to see the new expansion, by the way, W-A-S-S-I-S. -S -S, Wasi's, that, that's how you spell it? Yeah. Their new expansion is amazing. Seriously, it's amazing. Do you and like Everglades seasoning? I have had that. Wow. I haven't heard that in a long time. I do like that stuff. It's a little harder to find. Public choose to carry it. All right, real quick tour. You got 159 viewers. Or actually, All right, uh, 166 right now. By the way, like and share if you don't mind. Uh, so we have our flour. We have our garlic powder, salt. A little bit of salt in here. And a little bit more. Okay. Here's the key. Hawkers is good stuff. Hawkers is pretty good too, and they are a chain as well. Um, we have about a cup of flour. Our ratio we like is half a cup of cornmeal, which is about that. Half a cup of cornmeal to, to uh, about a cup of flour. We're going to stir that up. Now, this is our coating for our okra, which we're going to make here in a second, okay? Now, if you'll notice, I get also, I stir with my hands. I'm a hands kind of cook, okay? Uh, yeah. They said they have, there's electric pepper grinders. Oh, and um, somebody at Mr. Name said that she bought her cast iron skillet at Wasi's. Oh, right on. Now, here's the magical question of the evening, all right? The magical question of the evening is this. There are a lot of people out there who, when they get their chicken fried steak, they get white gravy on it. Then there are also some people out there oh, when they get chicken fried steak. They read way too fast. Chicken fried steak. Why do you do that? <laughs> it's because go you're so mean to me, dude. You're mean like an old oh, wolf. Cry as a river. All right, so. Justin. So, is you listening is, we are going to do either I need brown or white gravy, all right? Oh, uh, Adam said white gravy for sure. I, it's fixing to blow up in my hand. White gravy or brown gravy, guys? So we'll make we'll make either one. We're gonna make it the same way. We're just gonna make it with beef stock or milk. Do you leave your onions in the fridge or out? No, I leave them out. Always leave my onions out. When they go bad, they go bad. I don't put them in the fridge. Jana was asking. Mm. Okay, here we go. Uh, white. Uh, white. White. That's enough. White's good. What? Uh, white. Brown, yeah. brown, white, yeah. white, brown, brown, white, 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 brown, oh my God. gray. <laughs> That's great. You heard that's funny. That was awesome. If somebody just tunes in and you're just yelling brown, white, they're going to think it's really odd. Caucasian. That's <laughs> Stop, uh, yeah. sad. Don't, Steven, do don't do that. Uh, gray gravy. There's a lot of gray gravies. Okay, guys. That's enough. Yeah. You, you, we, we get it. Everybody okay. said, we're all rednecks. You, you do white gravy. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, right. then let's go, get started. All right. <clears throat> I didn't charge my phone. We're Can you see my nose hair? Uh, probably. Uh, the people that have you on their big giant 70 inch TV do. All right. We use Luann cooking oil. We like it. But truthfully, we use whatever we have. This is on sale. Because uh, vegetable oil is vegetable oil, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, Luann, we know, is a good, it's good old southern style. Oh, a, lot of people, a lot of people use peanut oil. Um, we don't. We use good old vegetable oil. So, big skillet. Pan frying tonight. I liked how you were concentrating and you could not speak. I'm just going to have you go around and, and concentrate. pour oil? No, just pour <laughs> things into things. <laughs> that sounds like I'm stupid. Oh. Okay, go. All right, potatoes, you can see, these are going to be just fine by the time we get through cooking everything. It's going to be perfect. We'll break those down and make our mashed potatoes and serve it up. We're going to cook our, we're actually going to cook our meat first because it'll hold the heat better than the okra will. Lily said white's for chicken fried steak and brown is for schnitzel. Yeah, I mean, it could be for all things. You can do whatever you want, really. There are really not a, whole, not a whole lot of rules in cooking. Baking, yes. Cooking, no. All right, salt. Yes, Jesse, it's going to splatter. My God. All over my floor. Everywhere. So Yankee here. Jim said Yankee here. I like brown. Pepper. Oh, you just. Mm -hmm. Boom. Pepper. 
And you gotta remember, we're still gonna have some seasoning in our flour, but you still want a little bit on there. And the cool thing about this cube steak is it's got all those nook, nooks and crannies or whatever. Kind of holds it off. The flour is gonna go right in there because we're gonna get liquid in all of it. How now, big is your skillet? Um, this is, I think this is 13 inches. <laughs> <laughs> You know. <laughs> so stupid. All right. Somebody said they need a PTK something. We have PTK shirts. You can get those oh. at ptkradio.com. Go to shop and our new logo t-shirts there. 20 bucks delivered. Whatever. And we have some other cool stuff coming too. Yeah, 20 bucks delivered anywhere in the U.S. And if you want an apron, just email me at primetimekitchen at gmail.com. 20 bucks delivered. By the way, guys, if you want to get there... And I think you know what I'm meaning by get there. <laughs> Drink this. <laughs> or NyQuil. It's the same thing. <laughs> I mean, it's a double IPA, Ford Brewing Company. It's legendary, actually. I think Swamp Ape's one of the first, like, if I remember, one of the first, like, you know, that kind of beer in Florida that I remember drinking. People were like, oh, I've had Swamp Ape. It's like drinking Coors the first time. Like, it was a big deal. It was not. They would like to know what the temperature of the oil is. 350 for frying almost always. But I have found out on my stove, and you guys as well, that because of cast iron holding heat so well, I really only need to put this on like medium, medium high. What I do not suggest is coming in and going, I'm just gonna put this thing on high oh, and let it heat up pretty nice. quick, then I'll turn it down. Do not do that. Bring your temperature up slowly. Shouldn't we have something to drain those on when you pull them out? For, we will, honey. Yes, we will. Okay. Yes, we will. Because I don't feel like we're gonna be prepared. Well, I'll tell you, Tori. You caught me a little bit there. <laughs> I didn't want to make that noise, but we will do this. Because you're so... Tori is so ridiculous about this frying thing. Like, hey, honey, whatever you do, don't cook in the house. I'm like, well, I don't know if you know no, this, you honey. you can. Just don't cook like a fatty in the house. Well, honey, I got bad news for you. Fatty okay. cooking sometimes is the I'm best cooking out there. i to save you from the diabetes because... Well, I got bad news for you. Close. I've lost. We've all lost. We're all... It's gone. I will throw your nubbed body in the elevator to get you from top to bottom look, floor. Look how fast that is going up. Already, it's just been on medium now for what, three minutes? Yeah, says the guy that almost burned down the house. I can't see that because you have it tilted. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so, you almost burned down the house. The fire department had to come during a house Okay, Tuesday. so that was a tiny mistake. No, it really, you did it, it here too. No, no, no. It wasn't really a mistake because I, the dish was still great. Oh, my it God. It just produced more Robin's smoke than market. I needed to. By the way, if you like the video tonight, just like and share if you don't mind. And we do have tons of this other product that we do here. We have like 40-plus of these shows. Uh, just go to ptkradio.com and learn to cook everything from fried chicken to great street tacos all the way up to enchiladas, in-house made enchilada sauce. We, we all have it everything. at ptkradio.com. Um, Derek, I am a fan of the Goblin Market. Oh, yeah, for no. sure. Yeah. It is delicious. Now, Dora, one of the, really, before Norman Van Aken got there and set a standard with 1921, uh, which is genuinely, I believe, top three restaurants in the city, and I would put that up against I mean, Just creatively, Norman is a different human being when it comes to cooking. Different flavor profiles you'll never experience. Well, that I haven't experienced yet. Like, really cool stuff. And interesting dude. Great bar, too, by the way. But Goblin Market is like set the standard in Mount Dora. Yeah, really. we're going to make a PTK magnet. And we're going to make a PTK pin. P-I-N. Oh, yeah, yeah. A little, la little lacquer pin. Yeah, it's going to be Let's see how our... Hey, Jason. Uh, hey, J. Jason. Hey, J. Jason. All right, so you can see we're getting up there pretty quick, Tor. Yeah. So, actually, I'm going to back this back down. So make sure we get it. Do you have that touching the bottom? Because if that's the case, then you're not getting it. Well, honey, it, right. it, it's fine. Yeah, it's not touching the bottom. But I appreciate you caring. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to comment on my life that I'm doing right now that you don't approve of? They would like to know what kind of paper towels those are. Oh, man. <laughs> you guys, I love all of you. But, man, it's old. Like, it's old. No. Can we say it's old? Well, I don't even know what you're talking about, it's you old. crazy person. All right. Uh, let's go and get the steak going. What do you say? All right, so... What are you laughing at now, man? <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? I'm trying to go and keep this thing going. Wait, what are you going to do with that after you pull that out of there? Throw it at you. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, it's ptkradio.com, guys. Now, so have you ever heard double battered? Double battered! This is double battering. You ready? Is that what they do when they double batter it? So what you're going to do is build up on me. <laughs> you can support my wine habit on Tuesdays by emailing me at primetimekitchen at gmail.com. Work away from you always when you're putting something in the pan. 
Right, Jesse? Right, pros out there? Work away from you? Yeah, the thermometer is pretty bomb. Okay, it's not going crazy. No. How often do you keep the grease, uh, do you clean the grease off the blinds? We don't cook a lot um, with oil. No, we don't. I'll move this over a little bit. Um, they said flour, then egg. Uh, you can do that. Now, a lot of guys will do flour, egg, and then into the wash. I don't do that. I do that with chicken, but I don't do it with, fruit, with uh, the steak. A lot of people are like, oh, you're supposed to put it in the flour first, then the egg, and back in the flour. I don't do that. Why? Um, I don't know. It's just the way I've always cooked this. Actually, you need to go up a little bit see how we're, we're not cooking here. That's not good. You should have your oil hot enough that when you put your meat in there, it doesn't cool it down enough. So it's not frying. You want it to fry immediately. So it's a little bit lower than what I'd like. So I'm going to jack it up a little bit. All right. Well, I bet it since you pulled it down a little, right? Well, no. I mean, I turn it back up. I just thought in that few seconds it would get up to 350. It'll be fine, though. I'm just going to cook. It's going to be nice and brown. Don't worry about it. Uh, Mike Dixon said that there's such things as splatter screens. Yeah, it's that thing you lay on top of it. Hmm. You can do that. That's what we need. So these are done. The potatoes? Yep. I'm going to let them sit in the hot water for a few minutes while we cook this. Hey, Jenny, do you ever like to live dangerously and fry foods naked? I don't do that. Why? Um, number of reasons. Uh, it's stupid. And then, of course, the... Um, Jesse said he always does flour, egg, flour. Yeah, you can. I did not. <laughs> Thank you guys for... I really appreciate it. <laughs> don't ask for uh, Jesse approval and then not want his. No, other. no, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, here's the thing. I don't know. I never really asked for Jesse approval, although I don't mind it because he's a good cook. The cool thing about this also it does not take long to cook. Does the splatter screen hold in the steam though? No. Well, not as much. It does some for sure, and it makes it hotter. You don't really need a splatter screen. Just get your oil temperature right from the beginning and you'll be fine. David said if you want a country fried steak, just go to Perkins. You could do that. I'll but, take you. But this isn't a show about going to Perkins, really. <laughs> so much. It's really kind of a show about making your own food and having fun and then have your wife rag on everything you do in life while you're doing it. It's a pretty <laughs> easy concept to grasp, sir. Well, but, ooh, not quite. I might eat a little bit tonight. Just a touch, honey. Crispy is crispy regardless of how you get it, fine said. That's right. Another thing with uh, with this, now these are bigger pieces of steak. I didn't know that other one was underneath. And truthfully, and Jesse will tell you this as well, never crowd a frying pan. Make sure there's room around the food for the for the oil cook, or it'll just, it won't fry, and you, it'll be soggy. You don't want to do that. They want to know if you want a naked flour wrestled Jesse. I do not. You sure? And I, I have to tell you, I'm really, I wonder why they ask me all these questions. Like these ridiculous questions, like I don't understand it. Because yeah, they want to see it. Well, no, here's the thing. I think, I think you're, you're encouraging that type of deviant behavior. And I have to tell you, I'm not a fan <laughs> at all, really, about your behavior on the show. Almost every time we do it. I, I don't care. Okay. And that, that makes it worse. Look how pretty that is. So we got a nice, you get, oh, <laughs> nice crispy crust. That one's ready too. It's not. It is. It is not. <laughs> Tell you what, you run the camera. Jesse's not a girl. Jesse's a boy. Jesse was a friend. He told me how to cook all the time. I told him <laughs> to shut up, and he did not listen. He told me I breaded it wrong. <laughs> I drank this 900 percent beer. <laughs> Idiot. All right. Um, oh, what size? We're, we are next to the little. Uh, okay, so for Jetty Park. What did you just say? You said next to the little and I said 500. Oh, no. Um, Jetty Park, we are going to be next to the little trail that goes from the campsites over to the pavilion area. Mm -hmm. We're close to that. Mm -hmm. And that is the week weekend of October 5th, 6th, and 7th. We are going out there and camping. To and do a picnic. We're going to do a picnic that we're going to do a pig roast, um, but we're going to take our RV out and we're going to camp out all weekend and invite you to do so as long as sites are available. They have cabins, but I think they might be sold out. Right, yeah. They but it, it is going to be a lot of fun. There's no charge per se. Right. Uh, we're going to ask everybody to, to pitch in and help pay for the, um, 
Y'all pay for the pig. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. Um, they would like to know if you're going to hunt the pig. We are not going to hunt the pig. You're not? No. That's how men do it. Oh, thanks, man. So now it's my manhood question. Again, can't thank you guys enough for spurring that on. Hey, and you guys can bring like side. Oh my god, you just splattered it everywhere. You guys can bring like side dishes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Tori, are you going to be on the upcoming Chew I Crew? I am not. Not that I know of. I no. I don't know. So. Um, BT's coming. BT and Jana are coming to Jetty Park. Dan's coming. Barb's coming. Good. That's awesome. I mean, we're going to have a blast. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I've never roasted a pig like that before in my life. So I'm going to learn as you guys go. We're going to throw it on the ground. We're going to cover it up with a bunch of leaves and keep it wet. And Wait, we're doing that? Yeah, we're doing like, honey, no, we're cooking we a 100 pound hog or whatever it is. We can't put it in the ground? Yeah, you build a grill and you like put it on the ground. You, you, build, you dig the fire out, light the fire, you put leaves on it, you set the pig on top of it, you cover it up. We are not in the islands. We cannot do that at Jenny Pond. Honey, I got we have that. to get I got, a giant... Can I tell you I have god awful news We'll have you. this uh, discussion offline. No, we will not. We'll talk about it now. We will argue and fight <laughs> while doing so. Look, we we've it's shared. Like we've shared. They don't like it. We've shared. We'll be fine. All right. So we our steak is done. We're gonna let that just kind of dry right no, off. No, we don't prefer the gas stove. We prefer. I mean, the electric stove. We prefer the gas. We do prefer gas. Yes. Okay, we turn it down a little bit. But they don't offer it here. They don't. All right. So we had our okra. So, and it's soaked up a lot of this. So we want to kind of, yeah, yeah, it's going to, it's going to be fine though. So we're going to put our okra in there. We're going to toss it. So we want it to be nice and crispy. And really, honestly, what I do is I get a giant stainless steel pan. No, Eric, you didn't ask that. That's why we're going to have this discussion offline. Yeah. I don't know about this offline world you live in. <laughs> I'm trying to make it sound fancy, but we're not. We're going to have this whenever I can prove you're wrong. Right. And you better get some proven pants on. Do you have enough flour in there? Yeah, we're fine. Okay. We don't need to cook about this much anyway, just for me and you. I just. I'm not eating, baby. Well, you just said you were. No, just a little, that country fried Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you gotta call 811 for the dig permit. Watch. Whatever! Whatever. So we're putting our fried okra in the same exact ah! pan. Oh my God, you splattered me. Same exact pan. <laughs> Look, man, you gotta move fast in this kitchen. <laughs> we got some hot oil in here now. All right. Turn. All right, let me okay. all wash my hands down. Nope. So Tori. We want everybody to like and share a video if you've enjoyed this. If you do enjoy it, because I got a good time with us on Tuesday night. By the way, at the beginning of the year, let me just go and get you prepared for this. I got this. At the beginning of the year, oh, we're going to be moving to Sunday nights. Because I will be, uh, I'll be hosting the film. Well, I'll be, I'll be doing the Jim Colbert show uh, at the beginning of the year. So, of course, we won't be able to do this on a Tuesday night. Uh, at seven o'clock anymore, so we're going to change it, and we're going to it's going to wind up being Sunday supper. We still want to do the show for you guys. We really enjoy doing it, uh, so just kind of mark that on your calendars. Not that you need a big leeway for something like this, but that's going to happen in just a little while. Yep. So it's going to move to sat Sunday after Sunday afternoon or e evening, right? Yeah, Sunday evening, same time. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Uh, we know football season's going to be tough. <laughs> Butter. That's probably about a, um, a quarter of a stick of butter because what I want to do is one uh, couple of potatoes. We want a little salt. All right. Okay. While that's cooking, we're going to get this going to grow. It's done. I'll make a little gravy in a minute. Since that poker's done cooking. How do you become a top fan there, I think? I don't know. I don't know how any of these badges or any of this stuff is working, but we have like all kinds of stuff happening on here. Um, I think you actually have to go to um, Drink, Eat, Repeat and become. You know, like that page, and then you'll start getting like badges and top members and all that kind of stuff. Is that a big deal? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, Do it then. That'd be awesome. Yeah, man. We love hanging out with you guys. I mean, we honestly, 
you know, we're just we're just regular people like you guys. We like to do all the stuff that you guys like to do. We like to hang out with uh, with you guys and have a little fun. Our cafeteria gig was a lot of fun. We got more of this coming down the line for you guys, so we can all hang out together. Well, and that's where we're gonna have all of our events. Yeah. On the drinky repeat page. We'll have them right there. You're welcome, Laura. And by the way, if you'll notice, I'm not using a mixer because I think mixers get too much gluten out of potatoes and it makes them not as good. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what you want out of a mashed potato. I don't want anything out of a mashed potato because I don't like them. So, are you wow. asking me? Maybe you should have met with them yesterday. <laughs> <'Cause they're, laughs> Because that was the most popular thing any human being's ever said in the history of human beings. It would have gone awry. More, even more so. Oh, you think you would have called him out? Yeah. Alright, let's turn this up. Over open? Oh, Lord. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have a couple pieces of that. Yeah. For sure. So, I would usually have my uh, oil a little bit deeper so that we could get that nice crisp on all the sides. It won't matter, I promise. But look at that great brown we're getting there. Everybody else is um, um, impressed by your potato ability. Are they really? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you should have asked me. Uh, really? I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> I was, making I was just making that up. up. Maybe you're trying to sound good. Maybe you shouldn't ask me questions about it so much, really. Yeah, please, guys, like and share. I would appreciate it. We would appreciate it. So these are good for sure. I feel like you're mixing that too much. Please stop talking to me. I'm begging you. Man, those are good. Aren't you glad I'm home for this? Nope, <laughs> I'm not. I just actually bought you a ticket to go back. I don't know. You I, you almost cried real tears today at lunch. Because I was Tori. <laughs> right in the restaurant. By the way, we went to Agave Azul today. Mm -hmm. In Winter Park. It's a New Mexican spot. They have great design. They have a long way to go. <laughs> well, I, mean, I shouldn't say. <clears throat> so it wasn't like the best thing I've ever had. And unfortunately, there are a couple good spots close to that that do the same thing, like one 500 yards down the road or so. So, you know, uh, good looking spot. All the Winter Park people were there. It was packed. Every, packed. every chair was full. Every chair was full. Um, and I will go back. I'll give them another shot to press me a little bit, and then we'll go from there. But they have a little bit of work to do, in my opinion. And I wish them the best, because I don't like to see anybody go out of business. And it's about the same people who brought you St. Añejo, that's out in um, that Mexican spot that's out in Oviedo off of Redbug. Same people there. Wait, Jesse, you sell, oh, you sell the people that work there staff tamales. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had tamales, but I wouldn't even try to get them. I, I won't eat another tamale. I will except never eat another one. Jesse's tamales. Yeah, by the way, if you don't have them, tamales and maz. Uh, not only does he make tamales, he can cater, which is unbelievable, enchiladas. He does a bunch of burritos, and they're absolutely delicious. Um, also, I want to say another, another big thank you out to our sponsors, uh, the guys over at Goldsmith Jewelry on Lee Road, Mike Oliver Holmes, and of course Porky's Barbecue, where I just had lunch last week, just as good as it was the first time I ever ate it. We love Porky's. If you haven't been there, true southern style barbecue, the way it's supposed to be done, and the best sides and sweet tea in Orlando, and it's not even close. I'll be dead honest with you, not even close. My yeah. man knows what he's doing, and he's a good man. We had Milo's sweet tea when I was in Mississippi. Oh, it's good. Milo's is great. That's a great color. Those look done, right? Yeah, these here are pretty close, but for some reason, I'm not getting uh, the right brown on this side. So, but you can see, it takes a little time. It's weird how okra cooks. It'll be white, 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 and then it'll turn into this right here, which is abs. That's perfect right there. So we'll get that out of there. That's perfect. It's gonna be nice and crispy, and all this will be as well. But you, know, you gotta let it cook. Just take your time. Really, you're not going anywhere. Let the let the pan do its work. These pans hold heat quite well, and out of nowhere. All your okra will be that beautiful brown color you want. And the, in my opinion, the crispier, the better. No, it's not Porky's in Melbourne. It's not as affiliated with Porky's in Apopka. I didn't know there was a Porky's in Melbourne. Yeah, I remember there was that whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's not even close. Um, it's, uh, the when's the last time you golfed? You know, it's been a while since I played golf. Um, it has been a while. It's too buddy. hot for baby? Yeah, it's too much. It's just too hot. I, I, you know, I, I don't enjoy it anymore when I'm out there sweating my uh, sweat off. Uh, Joanne went to Art Smith's on your recommendation. How'd she think? Or what'd she think? It, well, it's explanation point, so I can only... Okay. They have a, the Memphis Bell cocktail and yeah, their fried chicken? The Memphis Bell is at um, is at Homecoming. That's what you just said. Art Smith's is a Homecoming. Oh, Art Smith's, it's Art Smith's Homecoming. Yeah, yeah, no. That's Norman Vinny. Yeah. A totally different guy. 
Uh, tamales and moss makes the best tamales. They do make incredible tamales. I mean, incredible. And you know what the thing is? Uh, the guy, Jesse, who we talk to here when we do the show all the time, is a perfectionist. And uh, you reap the benefit of his obsession. I feel like these are done. Okay, but you know what? I am tired of you saying that. God almighty, are they out of you happy? God, are you happy? Are you? This is why people don't like you. <laughs> is that it? I'm making a list. Checking it twice. You want to find out what they look like? All right, here we go. Let's get this out of here. Oh, they want to know why you're not in the new promo shot. Oh, well, because I'm not going to be on the show in a little while, and they, you do the promo shots out. That's, I don't I mean... They expect some drama there? Nobody asks. <laughs> what? Nobody asks you stuff. <laughs> no, I'm not in there because I don't belong in there. I'm not, I'm not going to be on the show in a couple months, so a few months or whatever. All right, so Tori, I need you to move. Uh, I mean, like, out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Heads up for a sec. You're, you're going right my way. Could you move out of the way? <laughs> Crazy. Wrong with you. Okay, so we're going to move. God, you, well, how do you manage to get right exactly in my way every time? Get away from the okra. That's what I'm doing. Get away from the Tory. I hope it burns you. It is. It's so hot. I hope it burns you. <laughs> it's so hot. All right. So, gravy. Uh-huh. Is easy. Uh-huh. Here's how I want to do it. We left a little bit of oil in the pan. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, it's delicious. We're going to put some onion. Okay. And we're doing white gravy. We're doing white gravy. All right. This is how easy white gravy is. So we want all those little bits and pieces from the steak and from the okra, guys, okay? Okay. We're gonna saute these onions. We're gonna get them just a little bit soft. Who out there knows what I'm doing next? Well, they're on a delay, so you're gonna have to wait too long to find out. All right, here's what I'm doing next. <laughs> So when you're when you're making fried food like this and you're making this, a lot of people like, and I've done this a thousand times, guys. I throw my flour away when I'm making. I'm like, well, I gotta make gravy. That's perfectly good flour. It's already seasoned, so don't throw it out. Oh, Joanne also went. Or this is a different Joanne. She went to Severna Opa before they went to Improv together. Hey, you know what? what? Did she go on our recommendation? Because we had somebody yeah. on Facebook asking, so they were in from out of town. They were going to a show. And they wanted somewhere to eat. We gave them Taverna Opa. And everybody, the cool thing is, before I answered, everybody said the same thing. Yeah. Either Tapatura or Taverna Opa because it's fun and the food is great. Tori, will you be going to Universal? What does that mean? Uh, I don't know what that means. Like Universal. Oh, you mean for the um, uh, the listener appreciation party thing for the monsters? I don't think they've announced that yet, have they? Yeah, that's what we did. That's why we broadcast there yesterday. Oh, okay. Um, when is it? Um, uh, August, it's, it's the weekend we're gone. We're, we're not going. Oh, okay. Because we're actually going to be out of town for your birthday. Oh, that's right. All right, so, flour. Consistency is key. With what? Gravy? Temperatures. Yes. Where's the trash bag? Tony, I'm not showing the trash bag again because everybody got butt hurt last week and I had to talk to a bunch of people and try to convince them that we recycled. <laughs> they don't believe it. I, I don't Jack care. being one of them. I don't screw, care. screw him. Oh, old Jack, you old man. All right, so when you're making gravy, the number one thing is, I know you guys out there who are pros, are, you, you, you got to keep this flour moving, all right? Keep it moving, stir it. The reason why is because your flour will burn and your gravy will be bitter. You want to make this, you want to You want to move this. Just keep it moving like this. You don't have to do anything crazy. But you want to cook this a couple minutes. You want to get that raw flour out of there, all right? It doesn't take that long. And the onions will be fine. Everything's going to come together just fine. They want to know if we watch Westworld. We or... do not watch Westworld because we're Americans. <laughs> and that show is whack as hell. <laughs> what was that show you were watching last night where those people were drag racing? Oh, that was like uh, one of the like A and E shows or whatever. I, I mean, I, it was a uh, like monster. That noise oh, comes right in. It comes right in. Is everybody complaining about it? Yes. Yeah. Or just you complaining about it. Here we go. Half and half. Does it matter? Watch. You can do this with just milk. And gravy is magically going to appear. Look at there. Gravy just magically appeared. We're cooking with cast iron. Babe, there's a silicone thing right there. Whether or not. Oh, baby, come on. Come on. 
Come on, here we go. Let's see. Is that so bad? Monster Garage, they're asking. It's not Monster Garage. It's one of those other things where they race each other and they get into into man fights. They get into man fights was just so ridiculous. <laughs> All right. What does that look like? That resembles white gravy a lot, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Gravy is. Let's break it down. Steer outlaw. Huh? Uh, it, steer it could be. Gravy is. Oh man. Wow, that gravy's really good. Dave, that cast iron is, a, I think it's a 13 inch. Yeah. We need a little bit more salt in this gravy. And actually a little bit more black pepper. Now, a lot of people put a little chicken stock in there or whatever, kind of give it a, a little bit of a rich flavor. Oh, street outlaws. It could have been something like that. And we're ready to plate. Let's make this food and get you guys on your way. Yeah, I think so, Corey. I think it's Street Outlaws. Cool. All right. There's your white gravy. Here we go. Let's better that door. What do you say? Yeah. Easy, easy, easy. I don't know what Joe said, but everybody's LOLing at him. Oh. Our Joe? I don't know. All right. Onion, flour, milk. Basically, right? Yeah, you're making a roux is what you're doing. So we're doing... So we have our mashed potatoes. This is our southern... Mashed potatoes, gravy. Marianne said you should use white pepper. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> Couldn't appreciate your opinion more. <laughs> Crispy steak. Did you hear me crunching on that okra? <laughs> oh my gosh. It is dank. Check it. Oh my lord. Gotta have a clean plate, man. Can't be under a new busted plate. Got a nice big pile. Oh, can you hear that? <laughs> that okra is so incredibly good. It's so good. Need a little bit of salt. All right, guys. Now I have a little parsley. Oh, do I have some parsley in my thing here? Yeah, there's curly. Oh, I'll be we just pulled this out of our little garden. All right, right there on our garden. So here you have it, guys. This is chicken fried steak with southern mashed potatoes and pan fried okra. That is a winner of a dish, and that calorie count is going to be in the <laughs> 400,000 range. <laughs> so take your heart meds and get a nitro pill close. <laughs> and wash that down with a nice glass of buttermilk and then go out for some Bananas Foster. <laughs> that way you can die that night. No, that's a great dish, you'll love it. Have one of these occasionally. And this is a great dish to make for a lot of people because it does cook fast and easy. I mean, we're in 53 minutes and we talked a lot. You could cook this dish in 30 minutes easily if you prep it right and get everything going. You have a couple frying pans going at one time, you'll be set. It's really inexpensive too, that entire steak if for four pieces that size would be ten dollars the okra was two for five so i'm telling you twenty dollars you have a nice beautiful southern dish that stays true to southern tradition that you'll love a hundred percent if you don't mind like and share the video always visit ptkradio.com we really appreciate it follow us on primetime kitchen on twitter and on instagram and of course on facebook and join our new subgroup called drink eat repeat it's awesome don't forget we do have the radio show primetime kitchen on uh, real radio 104.1 friday nights at eight o'clock but the repeat on eight eight, eight o'clock sunday mornings is really the best we're gonna have uh, the guys from uh, lafayette cajun on this week so you guys had some questions about cajun food we'll cover all of that and of course any question you have for us here at primetime kitchen you can email primetime kitchen at gmail.com we do have those great t-shirts the new design 20 bucks anywhere in the nation and tori hand makes these uh, aprons if you want one just tell her what kind of color and style you're into we have all different abilities to make it we'll get these made and sent out to you as well, October 6th, we have a gig coming up, The Picnic, and we want you to enjoy yourself. Guys, like and share the video. And again, thanks for tuning in to How Tuesday here on Primetime Kitchen. We'll see you next Tuesday. Right see you next here. Tuesday. Bye now.